Well, hey, man. It's Jamie. That's me here. Welcome back to the channel, honey. Listen, girl. Listen, I think I'm my sinuses, like, they are tearing me the hell up. Okay? In the late night hours, girl, I just start feeling, like, sick or whatever the case was. Nose is runny. So, girl, I know I'm going to be pausing this video so I can get to this nose because, listen, she has been lightening my ass up. Um, what else I had wanted to say? Like, she's just been lighting me up, honey. So y'all can kind of see, so you can probably tell that I sound nasally and it's it's my nose, girl. I did take me some Benadryl. I feel a little better, but I am going to take me some more later and I'm going to try to like, you know, get me another nap in, get me some more rest, you know, because I definitely need it. But, you know, also because of how I am, child, at times I always like to, you know, I got to be busy doing something. So that's why we here, girl, period. OK, so I want us to get into love during lockup. We got some things that we want to talk about over here. And actually, let me make sure. Um, Make sure you guys are coming into the video. You are indeed liking up. Ooh, the video so let me see here because we were introduced to a new couple I want to talk about them I feel like Joey and Michael did not have a whole lot going on either so we're gonna um you know probably talk about them first or whatnot so the people that it, that, that did not have a lot going on let's go ahead and um get into those people's people first okay so I want to talk about the first couple that we ended up meeting which was let's see Rick and Samantha okay let's get into Rick and Samantha so this is the new couple that we meet and I'm not even sure of their ages. I feel like they might be in their fifties. Um, don't quote me. It's either forties or fifties that they're in. And, um, they have known each other since high school. So they used to kind of date. Actually, I feel like they've known each other beyond high school since they were kids, but they dated in high school, like real briefly, you know, how I be in high school, girl, it don't really be that deep, that serious for real, for real, for some people it do girl. But according to him, it wasn't really that deep or serious. I think they lost contact for like 35 years or whatnot. He went on to be married, deal with whatever, what, with whatever his vices were at the time. And same thing with her. Uh, which is why she's the one that's locked up at this time. And they ended up reconnecting. He said that he never forgot about her, always thought about her. He did a search on her, and that's where he ended up finding out that she had a, a pen pal account. So once he located, like, where she was at and everything, um, he decided to, like, write her a letter, I believe. And so that's how they ended up getting reconnected. Now, she's locked up. Um, from what I can remember, I feel like it was a few charges, but I do believe that it's tied to alcohol. I think that she's had some struggles with that as he has as well. Okay. Which is not a good thing because it makes me think about Joey and Michael and I'm like, oh, this could be a recipe for disaster because I feel like this ain't this lady's first time getting in trouble. And here we are again. And I just feel like, I don't know. I feel like it's easier to become a, maybe it's the same. Maybe it's, e it's just as easy to become an alcoholic as it is with drugs as well. But I don't know. I'm not even going to compare the two. Let me not do that because they both bad. Okay. And the, what I'm basically saying is that I can see Rick and Joey both spiraling back out going back down the wrong road. Once their partners get out of prison. Okay. Now, um, let me see what else so what we learned he doesn't have any children but he sees his nieces as his children and that's not an uncommon thing okay some people are very close with their uncles and aunts right so he has them out there shopping with him he's looking for some nice attire I guess he wants to have something nice when he goes to pick up Samantha from the prison and so um he ends up first of all Samantha calls she meets the nieces or whatever come to find out one of the nieces is a correctional officer so she's already on guard like wait a minute I don't know how this situation is going to work for you because I've seen this a lot um in the prisons because I read their mail and girl with her nose ass girl this is exactly what I will be over there doing too girl um I'll be over there reading it down she's all in a business okay because that's what they're supposed to do they're supposed to read the letters and all of that and see what's going on and that's when she's learning that this person is with this person but also don't know that person a is over here messing around with person d and got a person c on the side so it's a whole lot going on okay and because she has seen it all she's a bit concerned and she's just like i just don't want you to get played so she get a little misty eyed of course it resulted in him getting misty eyed as well and i said lord please don't let this lady please don't let samantha play mr rick 
Okay, but sometimes I be feeling like this what y'all get because y'all be fools. Y'all be fools. Y'all be yearning for love so much that you sit up there and blatantly let people take advantage of you. And I feel like a lot of y'all be blinded on purpose. I hope that this is not Rick's story because you could tell he really does genuinely care about Samantha. I just hope that she feels the same way in my personal, okay? Now, what we also learn is the fact that he has a trust child because he ain't got no kids. He does have a trust and that trust is set up for Sam. It sounds like he was saying it's set up for Sam and he wants to be able to give her money so that she'll be able to pay for um you know different things at the comments area or wherever she may go she may have she'll have a, she'll have access to funds or whatever while she's in prison so he set that up a trust or whatever i guess he pulls that money out for her whatever the case is and of course the nieces is on the fence girl and i'm on the fence about it too he doesn't see a big issue with this because he is planning on marrying this woman he is planning on marrying this woman and he uh, according to how it sounds he may have already proposed to her and it's already going down. It may be a clear understanding that that is the route that they are going to take. So I definitely hope that in the end it works out for Rick and Samantha. Okay. Because this right here is a different type of spin in the block. Okay. All right. Now we were, it was cute with Nelly and uh, Ashanti and they would have been separated for about what, 10 years or whatever. Then they spun the block. Baby, y'all ain't seen each other in 35. Girl, this is a different type of spin the block over here. But we going to see how it plays out for y'all, okay? Good luck. All right. Let's go ahead and move on from Rick and Samantha. And next up, I do want to get into Joey and Michael, okay? Y'all, I really like Joey. I don't know. Joey just seems like he is just such a sweetheart um a genuine person i mean just basically what we see on the television screen i don't know but i really like joey joey seems like he's in this place where he just really does not want to relapse he doesn't want to go down the wrong road but he cares a lot about michael and he wants to give him the chances he would want others to give himself okay and i'm just like mm, joey you deserve so much better and i can tell you right now just looking at michael like you just deserve so much better i think michael has a desire and wants to do better but he has his demons is what I feel. And it's just very hard for him to stay on the straight and narrow. This man has been messing up majority of his life. Most of his life living is what is giving. I'll say 75% of his life, he has been a fuck up. And it's no disrespect, but that's what it is once I saw the mug shots. Do you really think that he's about to flip it, change it, rearrange it for you, even though he really does need to do it for himself? I mean, the possibilities are out there, but uh, just off of how he wasn't being straightforward when it came to how when he getting out of prison, I'm like, mm, ain't no telling what else he withholding from you. I just I don't I don't trust Michael like that, but we know that you love him and we just hope that it works out. OK, so he ends up talking to Michael about the conversation he had with the family once they got off the FaceTime call. And he says, listen, I told my family about the relapse. And he's like, why would you do that? I'm like, now, why would you tell him that you told them about the relapse? Like it came out your mouth. And so when he said, my, well, my sister said it, I said, thank you. Okay, be clear. The sister was the one that put it out there. So I had no choice but to respond to it and, and, and confirm. Okay, clarify and confirm that it happened. Okay, um, of course, they know that you were around at the time that that happened or whatever. And so Michael is thinking that they may be blaming him. You ain't lying. That is exactly what they are thinking. And you may have had something to do with that. I would believe that you did, okay? Um, which is the reason why Joey is more concerned now. Like, once he gets out, like, am I going to do this again? Like, I don't want to go down that road. It might end up being a decision where I have to walk away from him. Joey, baby, it really will be better if you walk away from him now than later because I don't know if you're really going to have the strength to walk away. I think that you are going to use the years and the times that you guys have spent together as an excuse for you to stay longer and all of that. You're also going to feel like he has nobody. So you're feeling obligated to stay in there and hang in there with him. I don't want that for you. And if that's the case, if you are going to kick it with Michael, baby, you need to go out and hang with other motherfuckers, period. Because let me tell you something, Michael is getting it in in that prison and you ain't finna tell me shit different. He just told you on the last episode, listen, um, I'll stop if you if you're stopping. Uh, you should have been stopped when we made this an official relationship and you got your ass locked up. Like, are you crazy? So uh, that's enough to let you know he getting it in in prison, baby. And the next secret he gonna have to reveal to you, aside from him telling the truth about when he's really getting out, he's gonna have to tell you that he got a boo on the inside too. 
Okay, and another little thing he probably talked to on the outside is the wheel. But anywho, so Michael says that he, um, when it comes to his release date, because of course Joey asks about that, when are you going to be released or whatever, he says, um, uh, in three months I'll go before the pre-board. Once I go before the pre pre-board, they're supposed to let me know what my chances are looking like to actually get parole. Okay, and they could possibly say, okay, great, um, you can be paroled in six months. You're doing good. We'll let you out at the six month mark, whatever. Or they could say, hey we don't have enough record on you to show that you're doing better or you're progressing so therefore you're going to stay in for another year or whatever then they come to us with a video to show us that michael said i've been holding something from him and basically i could be here for another six years i don't know if y'all noticed but michael had grew a damn mustache by the end and not just a little piece of a little fuzz like he grew a full-on mustache which leads me to believe that when they talked to, um, got that video from Michael, it's a recent one. Michael is still locked up to this day. And um, Joey never really got the answers that he thought he was going to get. And he still got the runaround in my personal. Um, so, yeah, you thought he probably was going to get out in them six months. And in six months, they gave him that interview. And he got a full-blown ass mustache. Girl, and he's still there. We hate it for you. All right. Um, Joey did say that Michael hasn't been really straightforward when it comes to that. He'll tell him one thing and then turn around and tell him another and this and that. And then Michael tried to split gas like him on the phone. Like, I feel like you're asking questions that you already know the answer to and this, that, that, and other. Like, you know, he don't know the answers. And then you turn around and you get on camera and you say, I've been keeping it from him. And I say, and I, and then you tell us that, oh, I could be in here for another six years. You plan on that man talk. You play if you playing about some time, girl. But this is what you want, Joey. So good luck. Okay, look, girl, let's go. Let's get the hell up out of here. Let me see who else I want to talk about real quickly. You know what? Let's go ahead and get into um Shanta. Okay. I want to get into Shanta or Shante and True. So let's talk about them. So of course, she is a great cook and she wants to get into the restaurant business, right? And he is not a great cook, but he wants to assist her in getting make it getting her dreams up off the ground, right? Um, I think that's a great thing to be a supportive mate. But at the same time, I am concerned because I'm like, baby, what is your focus? What are your goals for yourself? Okay. Tell me. So now he's decided to, I guess, show the initiative and take him some classes, some cooking classes. Don't know how to cook, but you want to run a restaurant. I get it. I feel like a lot of people may do that. So you learn how to cook in prison. And first of all, I was a little shook that y'all was getting some of the stuff that y'all was getting squid and all of this in prison, mozzarella and cheese. Girl, I don't, I don't know why I be thinking y'all stuff be um, coming in boxes, boxed as lunches that just need to melt. You know what I'm saying? Milk from being frozen. Then they just give y'all some shit. But it's the fact that you over there actually taking a cooking class in prison. Oh, okay then, girl. I hate to say it, girl. Over here during the pandemic and this high-ass increase um, of cost of living and shit. Baby, prisoners seem to be, especially the federal ones, are living way better than us on the outside, bitch. Okay, y'all might wake up and see the same folks every day. But hell, a lot of us wake up and do the same shit every day and still be underwater with the finances. Meanwhile, y'all over there living rent for free. Okay, but I don't know because there was another topic that I saw swarming around on Twitter where people were saying that they were getting these bills for like hundreds of thousands of dollars because they were being charged for the time that they were being locked up. Which is so crazy because a lot of corporations pour money into these prisons and then y'all got the turn got the audacity to turn around and um charge people for their stay in prison and then it's been people that weren't even locked up in prison long they may have been locked up for like, i'm sorry jail or whatever it was maybe like two months six months or whatever and they get these high ass bills or that right there is messy and i may have to do a whole separate video on that because i may have to do a little deeper dive to find out what's really going on over there in that sector baby okay because we already got into the conservatorships remember i talked about that so then now when i think about this i'm like girl i might need to tap over and see what's going on so we can talk about some things but anywho all in all, back to Shantae and True. So she's over there seeing a restaurant advisor. She's learning things. In the midst of her doing this, of course, True gives her a call. And um, he pretty much lets us know that she is the person that really does the cooking. So she'll be doing the cooking for the most part. But he's going to be the manager. And I said, bitch, what? You're going to be the manager? Okay. Um, I'm not. 
not sure if I like this idea. Now, the uh, the restaurant advisor was pretty much telling her because she ended up getting on the phone. He was like, how long did it take for you to see a return? She was like, oh, it took about two years. He's like, shoot, I hope I was like flipped in like a few months. That's what we're looking for, yada, yada, yada. So they're having a quick conversation, True and the advisor. And then once he gets off the phone, the advisor tells her like mm, you know just be mindful when you're going in business with other people you know make sure if things all fall out that they won't be getting more out of what you put into the business and all of that and I feel like she wasn't lying because I was over here like you do understand Shantae baby that this is your passion this is not necessarily his passion and because of that, it leads me to be concerned. He is only in it for the money. And because also he's in it for the money and it's not his passion, he could f this business up for you at any moment. In my personal, I really feel like he could f this up for you at any moment, dear heart, because he don't care about it like that. And he over there talking about he going to manage. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like y'all should manage together. You shouldn't just be a cook. And cause it sounds like he's taking your idea and making it like he's going to be the boss and you're going to be working for him. He's going to be managing stuff and you're going to be the cook. Like, no, this should be something that y'all going to be doing hand in hand. He shouldn't be the one making all of the decisions, all of the decisions about a position and a dream that was never here as his to begin with. So uh, I don't think this is going to work out in my personal but we know that Shantae going to do what she want to do anyway. Khadija, how she is, try. So let's keep going. All right. So later on, we see where Shantae sits down with the stepbrother, Fred, that happened to introduce her to True. Because they were locked up in prison together for about six months, right? So they sit down and meet. And then Shantae, of course, brings up the 5K. You know, she says that she wants to start getting her money back because she wants to be able to use that 5K to get poured into her business. She said that money was stolen out of her safe who all was at the house at the time it was her children i believe she has a son and a daughter and then it was also fred okay so with that being said she feels like fred stole it and i was like well i'm not accusing your child of nothing but it could have been fred and then it also could have been your child because lots of would be thinking our kids be so innocent and they were like all oh, that innocent for real you know um but then at the same time it is giving this if the money been in my thing the whole time and my children ain't touch it why the hell would it be my kids it must have been you because when i brought your surround now all of a sudden she coming up missing period so i do understand her blaming that shit on fred okay so fred says that he wasn't in the house and he um never even seen her say to even know what it looks like he asked why would he take an opportunity from her Fred cut it out baby you over here uh being a thief and a robber which got you locked up you over there you taking plenty of things and opportunities from other folks okay so I'm sure so, I'm sure your stepsister not your biological sister wouldn't be too much different okay so of course true calls true calls and she's like oh I ain't doing nothing I'm just sitting here with Fred baby now listen I was here for true on this and y'all can feel away True stepped in, baby, and he automatically, he ain't waste no time. He was like, what's up, Fred? Hey, look, you go, he ain't even, I don't even think he let Fred tell him how he was doing, okay? I don't even think Fred got to say, oh, I'm good. He was like, hey, Fred, how you do? Listen, uh, you gonna get her that money back that you took, baby? It was like, True was coming at him, like, not only did she tell me you took it and I believe her, but I also know your kind, motherfucker, because I was on that same shit, motherfucker. So when you gonna give my girl her motherfucking money? Cause see, she got things she trying to do. I said, not true. You might not be into the black women, honey. But I am into this moment of you checking the hell out of Fred and letting him know it's gonna be a piece of accountability when I come home. Cause your ass need to get my her money, okay? Even though it was also a hidden agenda as well. You feel what I'm saying? Because you really trying to get this restaurant up and running for you too, and not just her. But anyway, girl, whatever. So then um, Fred pretty much uh, is talking to him or whatever like that. Like, you know, um, I hear you, big dog, or whatever. And basically, Fred did give off the energy that he took that lady money. Like, at the end of the day, Fred, your ass did it. Okay? It was just your responses to what she said and that what True said that leads me to believe that your ass did take that money and that's just on P. He took that lady money, honey. And, um... Then he want to sit up there and flip the conversation and say, you know, I, I got something for you when you get out. It may not be much, but I got something for you because, you know, you're going to be my brother-in-law, whatever like that. We're going to be family. And, you know, I can't have you beefing with me and we can't be on this and we can't be on that. So I got something for you in a whole lot. And True was just like, yeah, I right, nigga. 
yeah, all right. uh, I'm going to hit y'all later. Okay? That's what it was giving. So as soon as they got off the phone, baby, he'll go free. Free want to sit up there and tell some tea a little bit uh, when it comes to uh, true. And I think he said something like, um, oh, you don't know everything about him or I hope you know what you get yourself into or whatever, basically trying to plant these little seeds of doubts because he don't want to have to face true is what it's really giving because why the fuck you ain't say that when she was trying to get to know him the first time and why the fuck they've been dating as long as they've been dating and they got engaged and everything and now all of a sudden you want to try and tell her some things about true. Let me tell you something, baby. What it's giving, and I hate that I'm even appearing as though I'm defending him, but what it's giving is that he called your motherfucking car and you can't take it. So now you got to sit up there and discredit him because you thought that you was going to get a number over Shantae by telling her that you ain't never take her money or anything like that. But Shantae said, baby, I was born at night, but I wasn't born last night and you're not going to get that shit from me. OK, but you is going to run me my money, period. OK, so that's what it was giving. Um, Fred is definitely a hater and he couldn't take the, that. Uh, he couldn't take it. That true check the fuck out of him. All right um you waited this long to try and tell her some tea about that man i was with her when she was like oh, what she said why you ain't been say something why you ain't had been told me i know that's right and then he said why well, no you ain't go you don't go for no mess you don't go for no mess and then like that he, he go laying it on thick finesse and line i know you don't go for no mess like that i ain't even expected to get this far shut your ass up because as you were seeing it get this far you had plenty of time to continue to let her know the more they went along. So you ain't expected to get this far because you ain't expect him to check the hell out your ass. That's what that's giving. Understand. But either way, good luck. Let's all go ahead and keep going. Um, Who do I want to talk about next? I think we could go ahead and um, let me see. Let's go ahead and wrap Ayana as up. Let's go ahead and wrap Ayana and Jamal up real quick, okay? So she's about to head to jail. She don't know if she's going to get 15 days or 90 days, okay? So on her way out, as she's headed, packing her daughter up, taking her daughter to her mom because her son lives with the mama, but the daughter does not, okay? So she's taking her daughter over there, but on the way, she's talking to Lucky. Not, I'm sorry, not Lucky, but Lexi Blow. And she's just saying how she um needs to put money on his books. Oh, my God, I don't know what I'm going to do. We ain't going to be able to talk, whatever, whatever. So she got to put money on his books. She said she's going to put enough for two weeks because she's manifesting that she's only going to be locked up for about two weeks, girl. So then um, I, she, I, I, he called her, and then Lexi started asking some questions. He made it seem like he was really serious about her, told her to get ready to be a bridesmaid. And Yavonna, baby, I want you to get the therapy that you need because I just need you to get the therapy that you need because you just eat up whatever little thing that he say. And this man is not about to marry you. And ain't nobody finna make me think that different. I'll believe it when I see it. Um, what else? So she says that she tells her, and first of all, you so dedicated to put money on his books. You talk about putting money on this motherfucker book, y'all. At first, I thought she was talking about putting money on her child's lunch meal for the week. Cause it started, I started, I'm like, huh, I don't know where my head was, but I was over here like, oh, damn it. They, they charge a hundred dollars for a child to eat every week at school. Oh, okay. So she's just going to put two weeks out there. Like, girl, I would just fill it up for the whole month. Make sure my child's straight at least for 30 days. You know what I'm saying? Girl, then I'm realizing that she talking about this motherfucker. Okay, she put money on this man books. Meanwhile, you got your mama in the house taking care of your child. Girl, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. Basket case. Um, so I'm like, where is this nigga parents? Why they ain't doing shit for him then? Okay, they probably already know his kind and they finna do a got anyway. So anywho, she tells him about her court appearance and the date and how she was supposed to come see him. She got approved to come see him on that date, and now things have changed. And she's also over here thinking about risking it all because she can't wait to see him, that she's trying to go and see him and then also go to her court hearing. See, this is why you you really do make for great TV, Ayana, uh, 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 Yavana, whatever your, Ayana, whatever your name is, because you're stupid. And it's just like you make for great TV for people to drag the hell out of you on a consistent basis. It's a train wreck that you don't want to see, but you can't help but to continue to watch it at the same time. Like, these are your priorities not being in order. This is how you ended up here in the first place. Priorities not in order. And then you want to blame everybody else for your decisions that you make. And then you want to put your decisions off on other people. That's what I, I just, I, I can't get with her at all. So she's willing to risk it all. And I said, bitch, I wish you would center your children. 
the same way that you center this nikah is what I wish you would do. Center your life around them kids the same way you centering your life around that nikah. Dropping two hundred dollars on his books, girl, I cannot. So she done um. As they're on the way, she's telling Lexi, like, hurry up, hurry up. We got to get to my mom's house. He about to FaceTime me in, like, three minutes. And Lexi looking at her like, girl, and I'm looking at her the same way. I'm like, girl, we see we see each other, bitch. So she talks about her court hearing when she gets there. She asks if he's going to, um, oh, 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 I'm, yeah. So when she gets to the house, she says, my mama be in your bathroom. She goes upstairs in the bathroom. First of all, I do. Like, why are you all on the toilet? Hands all on the t- toilet. And he's like, girl, toilets. I don't care how much we clean them, they nasty. Period. Okay. Why is you all on the toilet? But you know what? I done seen this woman's house, so that says enough for me. But anyway, girl, you all on the toilet, leaning all on the toilet, hands all over the place, sticking out your tongue, want him to pull out his wangy wangy. He not gonna do that because of course he's behind bars and he's filming something. So you want him to get caught up and end up having to extend his time being in prison, fooling with you because you make stupid ass decisions. See, this is why if he does get, whenever he does get out, if he is dating you, you make dumb ass decisions. And that's going to likely be a reason why he don't fuck with you if he is trying to get his life all right. That will be some crazy shit. If Jamal came out of prison trying to make the right decision so that he does not end up back there, but you're the one that makes piss poor decisions that could lead him back to the same place, he gonna leave your ass. Okay, probably was gonna do that anyway. Okay, even if he ain't trying to make the right decisions. But that would be ironic to see for sure. So she over there showing her breast and pulling down her pants and showing her butt and all this and that. And you know what I hate for you, Ayana? You do not believe that you have more to offer but your body. Hence, probably why you're a stripper, but amongst other reasons. But you lead with your body. And a lot of times, them dudes come, they smash on you, they leave. And then you be wondering, like, what? You leave with that sexual energy and it lead, it comes off like that's all you got to offer. I really feel like this man don't even take you as serious for real, for real. But um, anywho, so what else did she say? She asked him if he's going to be talking to anybody. He says that he isn't talking to other women. He's going to be talking to people, but he ain't talking to no other ladies like that. And he says that she's his peace of mind and she keeps him sane. So now that she's getting locked up behind bars, she's about to be in the same predicament as him. And they're going to have to figure out a way to keep each other sane. And just to offer the simple conversation that they were having about that, um, I was like, that's when the thought came to me. Like, you know, it'll be so surprising. If this man came out and he's trying to grow the fuck up and make different decisions and she's still on the bullshit, that would be crazy. But anywho, Ayana asked her mom to take her daughter because she already got her son. She said, but I need you to take my daughter. Her mom tells her, you need to get your life together, girl. And listen, mama ain't lying because I just met Ayana what, two episodes ago and I'm realizing from the first episode that she ain't gotten it all together. OK, so then the mother tells her, you need to get your life together because the choices that you decide to make, it affects everybody. Why was this not clicking? It was going over Ayana's head. She wasn't listening. The reason she wasn't listening was because she kept cutting her mother off like she's a know it all. Like she got all the answers sway. And that was just so annoying. Like she really does not care about how what her actions and her decisions affects other people, especially when it comes to her mom, because she thinks her mom is always going to be there to pick up the pieces. Baby, you need to talk to some people that may have lost their parents who probably took advantage of their parents, always thought that they were going to be there. And then the parents are not locked up anymore. They're no longer here on earth. So now they got to figure out life. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to see, oh, that makes me think of Rennie Rucci just a little bit. When Rennie Rucci, you know, her and her mama used to stay at it or whatever, and she expected her mama to show up in certain ways, and now her mama ain't here. And she going through a lot. So it's like, girl, get your life. Because when your mama said, I'm not going to always be here, I knew exactly what your mama meant. Not that I'm not going to be here to pick up your pieces because one day I'm going to say no, but I'm not going to be here because I won't literally be here to do for you. Like, get your shit together, boo. All right? So then I just feel like Ayana was being um dismissive. And um, what else I said? Oh, did she say something like, uh, it's out of her control? She was being dismissive and she was saying like, it's not, you know, it's out of my control. I can't make these people, you know, give me charges for this and I can't make this and that. And I said, you are trying to miss the point. Point, You're missing the point on purpose. And it is becoming so annoying. Baby girl, you are the reason for your own DUI. 
you are. You're the one that chose to ride around smoking weed, being high as if somebody wasn't going to pull you over for it. And then what kills me is how you cry and then you want to use your children. I can't stand people that do shit like that. Y'all do a lot of fucked up shit out here and then want to turn around and use your kids to gain sympathy from somebody. Well, my kids, they're going to need me. I can't do jail. You should have thought about that. You didn't care about it then. And then you one of them people that probably smoke around them. Or you was just smoking, blazing up in the damn car. Then you about to go pick your child up and your child got to sit in the aftermath of the bullshit of what you was just doing to your vehicle. Trash. You don't be giving a damn. I don't like that at all. Like, it's so damn annoying. So when her mom tells her, like, listen, I'm not going to always be here. She going to tell her mama, you need to be. You're my mom. What? I feel like. The way Ayanna talks to her mom, her mom has allowed it for a very long period of time. And she probably has allowed it out of guilt for whatever reasons. Maybe the dad not being there or something. But I don't give a fuck what's going on. What you are going to do is learn how to respect me, especially when you need something from me. I don't need a motherfucking thing from you. Understand that. So get your shit together. I would have had to cuss my child out. I would have. Like, you're not for that. You need to be. You're my mom. Excuse me? And you need to have your shit together because you're their mother. What the fuck is wrong with you? Not you expecting me to always be there and you can't even manage to be there for your own motherfucking children. I would have ate my child up. I'm sorry. Would have got ate the fuck up in that moment. Okay? I would have tried to be a little delicate, but, you know, I would have gave it back. I probably wouldn't have been as angry and hostile, but I would have gave it back. For sure. Well, it just depends on the mood. You know what I'm saying? But anyway. So then her mama, then she says, uh, mom says, I won't be here to pick up all your pieces. She said, yeah, that's what Jamal's coming home for. Baby, I feel like Jamal's not coming home for that because they're showing you so many, inf uh, they're putting so much emphasis on you saying that. And that leads me to believe that he's not, that man not coming home to be there. That man trying to work through his own shit. Okay. And he might try. He might try to show up for you, but then he also might tap the hell out because he just can't deal. Who knows, okay? Anywho, girl, good luck. Let's keep going, okay? Let's go ahead and get to Teeny and Rob real quick because Teeny does sit down with the mama, okay? And the mama brought up the ex, so Teeny got upset. She's getting ready to leave. The mama is begging her to come back and sit down. Let's have a conversation. Let's talk about it. Teeny's like, eh, I don't know because you're being real disrespectful. And mama's like, well, no, sit down. Let's talk about it. Let me see how you're feeling so that I can understand and all this other shit, right? And I said, mama, you only doing that because the cameras are there and you want to make sure that you get enough camera time. That's what it was given to me. So Teeny, Teeny sits down, talks to the mama. She starts getting emotional, start crying. The mama says, listen, we both got hurt, bottled up. Yeah, we do got hurt bottled up but mama i feel like your hurt is more so geared to you towards your son and you trying to put that shit off on me for whatever reason and i don't know why okay so then teeny says you can feel how to um what she says she, i think she said you can feel how you want to feel or whatever she says but her and her kids have been the ones that's been up and down the road like we the ones that's been up and down that road doing what we need to do i'm the one that was petitioning for his early release because i felt like his time that he was given was a bit extensive bit. she was not lying because i brought that up probably like the first episode i said i'm sorry armed robbery or whatever for 18 years that's too damn long in my personal like uh like a lot of those a lot of cases need to be reevaluated. but you know i feel like the politicians too busy and they're fucking up over people's money not really trying to do anything but the bare minimum so they don't give a damn about that but anyway let's keep going they care more about shutting down damn tiktok but let's go so then um she says i'm the one that's always in, always encouraging him like when he don't want to fuck with you when he don't want to talk to you who's talking to him to talk to you it's me it's me and don't ever forget it it's me that's having those conversations ma'am okay so then um teeny says that uh no the mom said um well you right you right you did because girl uh basically the mama did not help her and we don't believe that the mama even signed the documentation when it came to petitioning to get her son the hell out okay you ain't trying to get your son from behind bars right uh because of the extensive amount of time but you want the son to give you money to help take care of you and stuff but girl okay so then the mom says that listen i come from an effed up background teeny like i came from an effed up background too now we don't know what the mama came from we don't know if she was out there 
doing drugs, prostitute. Like, we don't know what the mama had going on out there, okay? She just said she came from a tough background. But what we do know is that Teeny's daughter, uh, daughter's dad died when she was one years old. And then the other uh, child's dad is just non-existent, okay? But that's not really telling us the background that you came from, okay? That's telling us your background as a single mom, but what else you got going on, Teeny? What you... What else is it to you, okay? So the mom says that she doesn't expect the kids to take care of her, but if you're in a better position, then at least try to help me out, okay? I don't really fault her for that, you know? I mean, if she wants a little help and the kids can help her, then cool. But it seems like he's helping, but obviously it's not good enough for you. Just like you said, the flowers that Teeny sent you wasn't good enough for you either because he give you 100, you're going to want a 75. Once you get to 75, you're going to tell him to round it out to a smooth 200 or whatever the case, and you're probably going to keep asking for for more i feel like the reason rob be be falling off you is i think he might resent some stuff from his past when he was a child and things that may have happened and i also feel like you might come off as though you're entitled in some fashion and that may lead to some of y'all arguments as well so i would love to get to the root and understanding as to why rob and his mama always stay at it for the most part you know what i'm saying so much so that he had to request for her to send some damn money back okay so that's pretty much how the conversation um went when it came to Teeny and the mom and all of that, you know. Um they had their small talk. Teeny just feels like I pretty much I did a lot of stuff for him. So for you to throw another bitch up in my face, I don't appreciate that. When you don't even know the half of what all I've done when it comes to y'all. Okay? So don't bring her up again. Let me tell you, they bleeping this girl's name out, but I feel like we're going to see this at a later time. They're probably going to try and bring her in on the next season. We shall see, okay, just to make it that much more messy, all right? Um, What else happened? So, Teeny, the next day we see Teeny at the house, and she's pissed off because she didn't like how the meeting happened with the mom, but then also she feels like Rob set her up to go to this meeting with the mama and has yet to reach out to her to at least see how it went for her. So, she's pissed off. I can't say that she shouldn't be, but what she decides to do is go ahead and cut all the cameras off, okay? She said, this is going to get to him, and this pisses him off. And I do feel like it's messed up for him to give her a call because he can't access her on camera. But you can sit up there and you can, um, you can, you call her because you can't access her on camera, but you don't call her to check on her to see how the shit went. When you know her and your mama don't have our own good terms, that it's not good. That would have pissed me the hell off too. Okay. So, um, he calls, and that's also crazy because you're monitoring her 24-7. When somebody comes to the house, you don't mind asking who's over there. You don't mind telling kids to get their ass up off the sofa from eating food, but you can't check in with your wife through the cameras to see how she doing from that meetup with the mama. Interesting. Okay, so anywho, she he calls, she tells him about the link up, says that it didn't go good, says the mama would rather he be with the other girl than her. And I said, she didn't really say that, but maybe she insinuated that because the other girl looked out, but I don't think she really said that, but okay. So he met the um <clears throat> he goes into the spiel about the ex he lets us know that he met her on a dating app okay and they were dating for about eight years not a dating app a site whatever they dated for about eight years then says that there was a little bit of overlap when it came to her and teeny and teeny ended up stealing the show therefore stealing his heart and therefore he married her okay now he says he's sorry for what happened when it came down to to the situation with his mom if it really happened and she said what the fuck you mean if it really happened that's what happened I'm telling you what happened. If I say that's how it happened, then that's how it happened. You know your mama. You even get into it with your mama. So why is it so far-fetched that I'm getting into it with her too? Come on now. So then, um, Teeny learned. She says, another thing that pissed me the hell off is the fact that I'm learning that you have been giving your mom a, an allowance on either a weekly or monthly basis or whatever. And that $100 you are giving her She's asking that you give her 175. She wants more than what the hell you've been giving her. But let me tell you something. I'm pissed off because you have not been communicating with me what you've been doing. And if you've been keeping that from me, then what the fuck else have you been keeping from me? I said, I know that's right. So then come to find out, he still has a tattoo of his ex on his arm. And they showed the picture of the ex. But why did the ex look like teeny? I'm not going to hold y'all. The picture of the, of the girl on his arm looks just like teeny to me. I say, you might well, you might as well just leave that up there and then go home and be like, oh, yeah. So I got this tattoo you on my arm. Yeah. 
okay because it looked just like her as i hate to say it either that or you really got a type okay now uh what else happened so then of course they talk about no um he, well, I, she i think she she brought up something so of course they're still talking about the whole issue with the mama and her coming down on him about giving her an allowance and withholding information so he decides to deflect to make it seem like he really giving her some information which is where he has the gift of gab in my opinion um uh, by the gift of deflection is shall i say so he deflects and he tells her about um talking to the parole or whatever and take it parole board or whatever take it parole but they said if he gets early release go ahead and get out then what they're going to do is continue to monitor him for the remainder of his sentence or he could just wait till it's over and be completely free and the difference in that is just two months so instead of getting out in two weeks he could get out in two months and i couldn't necessarily blame him on that I feel like, hmm, you staying for two months, it would be just your luck if something popped off and you got s stuck and you ended up having to stay longer than that. So it's like, go ahead and take the two weeks, right? But if you do not trust yourself on the outside to meet all of the standards and requirements that they have listed for you, and you went this long, to him, he's probably like, what's another two months? I've been in here for damn near 17, 16 years, however many years. I might as 18 years, I might as well just stay right now granted in my opinion this man has served so much time with you fuckers over an armed robbery charge that i feel like y'all should just count it as done and just let the man out in the two weeks or whatever time for it just let consider it done why do y'all need to do additional monitoring when he has given y'all 16 years of his motherfucking life 16 to 18 because i don't know how long he's been in there 16 to 18 years he's already given y'all uh count it all done and send that man to fuck home so I don't blame him in a sense for wanting to stay back and making sure when he walks out, he's a fully free man. You know, he knows how monitoring and things go on the inside, but may not know exactly how that goes on the outside. So, of course, this frustrates Teeny because she's looking at it like, oh, my God, I have to spend another, you know, four weeks or however many uh or eight more weeks or whatever going up and down the road on the weekends when i was expecting to um see you within two weeks so now i got to do this a little longer so i definitely understand her frustration but he wasn't necessarily lying and this is where he's good at that gab type shit because when he said i mean you want to travel the world you want to do sh you want to go hang out you want to go do this or that it's things that you want to do but i can't do those things with you if i am confined to you know certain restrictions and getting approvals and doing this and that i'd rather walk out being a completely free man knowing i've served all my time and then i could just be with my family so i understood him on that a bit but then i also questioned how much monitoring were they going to do were they just going to monitor you for the next two months while you were out because y'all ain't gonna take no trips in them two months y'all could have just took an l on them trips and you could have just got out right so I question that, but at the same time, if you don't trust yourself on the outside, stay in there a little longer, bitch. Okay. But um, that's pretty much what's going on with them. And yeah, another good episode over there on Love Door Lockup. Y'all leave y'all thoughts and comments down below. Let me know how you guys are feeling about the episode and everything uh with Teeny and all of the couples. All right. I'm Jamie, that's me. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share my videos, or follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Jamie That's Me. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye bye. King of my city and code sack. Come and I swing like soldier rat. Leading my people like quarterback. But I study this shit, I'm an almanac. Had to get up and grind. Knowledge is booming, I'm here to apply. Came with the chip and the dip, it just single the mind. We finna do more to survive. I need my check. Spinning the block for the gouda, we hitting the jeweler to flood out the net. We don't do beef on computers, I'm straight out the sewer, we come when you rest. Niggas be looking perplexed, so keeping my foot on their neck. No map, I trust my gut for the quest. With drama, I'm fully abreast. I was ready for this and they died of me. All of a sudden, they tell me they proud of me. I've been dropping these haters like calories. Cross I came back with some batteries, stand for my honor, but too